a very good morning to everyone ladies and gentlemen thank you for coming to our tds webinar my name is max i'm the sales engineer of tds okay i'll be your host for today so once again i'd like to welcome everyone of you back and joining our first webinar in 2021 Okay, in today's topic, we will be sharing about how to achieve zero defects and zero ill loss by motion control. On behalf of TDS, I'd like to extend a very warm welcome to all of you. Thank you for allocating your time to attend our webinar. Okay, for our Q&A sessions, uh, will be after our last speaker has spoken. So in case anyone forgot about your questions, you may just type them inside the chat room and we will answer them one by one. Okay. And a gentle reminder for all of you to mute your mic, okay, in case any unnecessary noise were to pop up during the webinar. Thank you, your corporations. Okay, before we begin, I'd like to play a short introduction video about our company operation and business. Video is we cannot see the video. Cannot see the video. Okay, give me one minute. Okay, for those who are not familiar with TDS products, I have listed up all the brands up here. Okay, so for those who are so for those who are interested in any of the products, just approach us directly. Okay, and we will give you more info about it. Let me see, are you? Okay, sorry, because this is um, our first time using this go to meeting, so I'm trying to get used to it. Okay. Okay, next for those who like to read, you may visit our website. Okay, where we will uh, visit our website for free ebook where we will share about our technology and capability of our robotics products and IIoT products. I don't think you're seeing the next screen, right? Yeah. So I don't know why it is pausing screen sharing. This morning. Pausing screen sharing. The screen sharing has sound pause. How to unpause the screen sharing? Yeah? Uh, Don, do you know?
or maybe uh, Max, you can let's start already. Let Don start take over. It's okay. Okay. Okay, just a quick one for those who have missed our um, um, past webinar. Okay, you may subscribe to our TDS YouTube channel. Okay, where we will upload all our past webinar videos up to YouTube. So remember to click subscribe on our YouTube channel. Okay, now I'd like to invite our first speaker of the day, Don, okay, from Quicksilver, a company that produces advanced yet cost-effective servo motor. I will hand over to Don and he will explain more. Hi, Don. Please, thank you. Hello, good morning. Morning. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, loud and clear. Well, Quicksilver Controls, let me give you a... Uh, we're speaking on how to improve yields and reduce defects in your product. So I want to give you a quick introduction to Quicksilver Controls. I'm going to focus on the product and how it applies to do it. But quickly, uh, we incorporate 1996 also. So this is our 25th year. We specialize in hybrid servo motors. But we also support uh, conventional three-phase servo motors, DC motors, voice coils, and also a product we call Mazolver. I'll show you a little later. Controllers are highly programmable. Uh, so you can move a lot of the function down into them and away from a PLC. So that gives a lot of uh, capability and very high bandwidth. And they're of rugged design. We cover NEMA 17 through NEMA 34 in our hybrid servos. They'll get you up to 850 watts continuous, 18 Newton meter direct drive uh, for our 34 to four stack. Uh, as I said, two phase, three phase, voice coil, DC and resolver. So we do a wide range of products in there and can mix and match. We have a wide power speed curve and efficiency speed curve. I'll cover all these in following slides in there. But that allows you to easily pick the speed you want to use it and actually still get all the power out of the system. And we'll cover that in more detail. These are integrated intelligent motors, but we also have separate controls. So there's sometimes we're having the controls on the motor as an advantage, sometimes it is not. As I said, they're very programmable, uh, multi-thread operation, uh, very fast execution. This is our Silvermax X series. This is the 23 frame. This has the PLC functionality the, of the controller, driver, uh, feedback, and motor all in a package. And these are IP65. Uh, except the shaft. So if you need the shaft on there, you go through and uh, we have shaft seals that will go through and cover that. But there are M16 uh, connectors on there and give you your waterproof operation. These are a 34 frame. Give you a lot more power, a lot more torque. And uh, they also have clamp inside uh, to go through and handle the regenerated power when you're stopping large loads or heavy loads. And we'll give you some examples of those in uh, actual applications. Here's our whole lineup. We've got separate controllers uh, over to about seven o'clock is a uh, IX controller, and this is our N2 IX. It's the same controller that goes in the motors. This is our S2 and our S3 controller for use with third-party motors or with our motors. We also have these as board only. And then we have I-grade motors, which is the motor and encoder. And this is our resolver, which we'll get into a little bit later, but eliminates the encoder and makes the motor itself its own Resolver. Uh, so how do you improve production? Well, good oops. Good continuous torque. That gives you good margins. You don't want to be uh, at the edge of your capability so as machines get a little gunked, uh, they're starting to fail. So good margins. Wide power and efficiency curves. 
Easy to match uh, the speed to the application. You also get cooler operation, which turns into long life. Cover a wide range of speeds. Uh, there's some of the applications we get into, like pumping, where low speed in high stiction environments is actually fairly difficult, and we do it very well. We have a very wide inertial mismatch capability. It makes tuning easy. It also makes the tuning very robust, so as mechanics age, you don't end up having to go in and retune your mechanisms. So we're very robust in this, and I'll show you some pictures showing this later. Highly programmable. We can use a lot of functionality local to the axis and within the machine instead of having to distribute it out to get the intelligence. Um, and we'll show you some applications of that as well. We have a simple-to-use interface that's uh, available uh, free on the web. So we get this high continuous torque without overpowering the motor. Uh, it's really common in a lot of low pull count servos to run them at three to ten times their continuous current. And if you push them hard, you can actually demag the motor and permanently uh, damage it. But operating these at their continuous rating and still getting the characteristics we're getting, we get less heating. And we, uh, as I said, eliminate demagnetization. We use what are called high quality motors. And quality is defined as torque divided by the square root of power. In our case, newton meters per squ uh, square root of watt. And oops, keeps kicking forward on me. Um, so we can directly drive most lead screws and belt drives without gear heads, which is a whole nother cost. It's a volume in your setup. And it's something that wears out and starts getting sloppy and causes tuning to degrade in a lot of systems in there. Just one more thing to fail. We also easily tune 100 to 1 inertial mismatches. And I'll show you an example later that's at 3,000 to 1. Out of the box, they run, uh, one to, they will run basically open shaft to about five times rotor inertia without having to retune. About 90 to 95% of the axes we have out there are using the out-of-the-box tuning. So here's a comparison when we say uh, high torque that they'll be able to maintain because of the high quality. In this case, we compared a M3431P conventional 34 frame motor uh, to our 34HC1. At one newton meter, we only draw about 1.3 watts. This is actually measured. And this is motor and controller for the HC1. Uh, for the M3431, that's 25 watts. Two newton meters, 98 watts versus 5.6 watts. And this is just holding a load. So this is all going into heat in the motor. You get up to 4.85 newton meters, 577 watts for the conventional servo. There's 31 watts, which is actually measured for the high pull count. Uh, configuration of the hybrid servos that we use. So how do we do this? We use internal permanent magnet transflex motors. Uh, basically, we bring the magnetic path to the wire instead of the other way around. And that gets rid of a lot of the spanning copper. So that gives us less resistance. High pole count design increases the torque. So that uh, between the two, we end up with a lot less heat being generated just to generate the torque. And the internal permanent magnet, as opposed to the face magnets of a lot of the servos, allows us to field weakening so we can get a very wide speed range while still holding the efficiency and power. Let's show you. Here's a 34HC2. You can see that from 500 to 2500 RPM, we have almost a, a flat amount of power that we can get out. This makes it very easy to pick uh, the sizing of the motor because whether you run it at 1000 RPM, 1500, 2000 RPM, you're not that much difference in power. So you can pick the power rating you need over a wide speed range. It also says that even if you're running like a lead screw, which is 500 to 1,000 RPM, 1,500 RPM, you're able to get full power out of this motor without a gearhead. High efficiency, same thing. From get up to 500 to 2,500 RPM, efficiency is almost constant. 
Uh, low pole count motor, you'll find efficiency is basically uh, linear with speed. So I'll, I'll get in and show you one of those later in there. We end up with very wide efficiency in here, which means these are in relatively cool. Here's an example of a direct drive. This is a bottling machine, and we've got, well, this is about a 3001 inertial mismatch. Uh, it's about 1.3 meter, and what they're doing is slowing the bottles down so they can take a picture of the inside of each of them, make sure everything's clean, there's no chips for recycling bottles. It's direct drive straight off the shop. There's no gear head on this. So this is a example of what you can do. A lot of them take the encoder readings directly off of our motor to time all their cameras, save multiple components in there. And these have been very, very solid. We talked about high inertia loads. You may not have to move a horse. We've got a customer who does. So they're able to take the same tuning with and without the horse on the table. We're moving from a tenth of a millimeter per second up to about four centimeter per second. We do this, so we have our control system called PVIA, and we provide several additional dampings into the system that boost the phase margin. So it makes it pretty easy to tune, even over very wide loads. We're also able to cover a wide range of speeds. Low speeds in stiction environment require a lot of gain in order to keep it from grabbing when the stiction kicks in. And again, uh, the damping in the system allows you to bring up the gains, and that allows these to operate uh, both very low speed and at high speeds. Here's an application of a pump that uh, I use in multiple applications, moved in food and cosmetics and other stuff in here. And they'll actually run it over a million to one speed ratio. The raw pump has four cylinders in it, and they all have uh, O-rings on them, which are stiction. So as this is rotating, one pump or two pumps are pumping it all the time. So it gets a variation that goes about 17%. We're able to bring it down to about half a percent CV because the program looks at the calibration table and dynamically varies the speed all within the controller itself. So we don't have to go through and you know, do a large system out to PLC and back. This is able to do it with a very wide bandwidth. So we're able to go through and control this continuously as it's rotating. So this is a common use of this, oops, it's bounced off. are used for filling lithium batteries. This is very speed sensitive, so we have to control the flow at the beginning. They wet it, then they're able to pump faster, and then they slow down for the last bit to get the maximum uh, capacity and the reliability. Use them for pumping enzymes and food operations. Uh, these break down certain materials in there that would otherwise form carcinogens when food's fried. Used in pharmaceutical, uh, used up uh, some of the large soda manufacturers and other ones in there for going through and dispensing because they're a positive displacement continuous flow pump, just as an example of operation. Rapid motion, here's 23XC-1. Going through and uh, doing a single revolution, 35 milliseconds, uh, stop to stop. So that's ramping up to 2,600 RPM in 12 milliseconds. Doing about 12 seconds, 12 milliseconds of slew and 12 milliseconds to stop to within a few counts. So it settles very quickly. Uh, application of this, we can do partial revolution. So we've got an application that they're using a fair number of these in on SMT lines where they're using a optical inspection, and they can go, they can kick out a part in about 12 milliseconds without uh, losing the part behind it or ahead of it as they're going through and injecting bad parts. So that uh, greatly increases their usage. Uh, we're using a shutter for inspecting aluminum cans, that they're looking for light coming out of the can. And without the shutter, they'd end up losing several cans because the PMT would saturate. In this one, they're able to shutter it fast enough that they can recover on the next can. So 
very good uses for rapid motion in here. And these guys uh, are just running at the rated motor. So having the cycles kick back and forth does not get these things guys hot. Get these guys uh, very warm. We also have a function called anti-hunt that eliminates dither. The high pull count motors are able to be positioned in open loop when you stop, and it's an option. Uh, good uses of these. These are used in optical inspection and x-ray images, so you can use the closed loop to get there quickly, and then you can shut off the dithering so you're not getting blurs in the image. If you've got systems that do have gears in them, in the normal positions where they're parked, you, dither tends to wear out those teeth. So this goes through and greatly increases the life. It also gets rid of the noises in the system. So the system is sitting still. You end up with a dead quiet. In normal operation, we also uh, have fairly quiet operation. There's no squealing uh, like you get with a lot of chopper drives. We, it's one of the things we've worked on a lot. I want to compare our motor. This is a X23C3 to a similar size low pull count and grade motor uh, made by another popular company. And to consider here, most lead screws and belt drives are top typically operated between 250 to 1500 RPM. You operate a longer lead screw than about 18 inches. Uh, you're only getting about 900 or 1,000 RPM before you're starting to get where the lead screw is whipping, where it will damage itself. So this is a very common. Most low pull count motors are optimized for 5,000, 7,000 RPM, which means you're either throwing away most of the power or you're buying a gearhead with this. I see a question, inertia mismatch. The ratio of the inertia of the rotor of the motor to the load that's attached to it is called the inertial uh, ratio. And when you have a load that has a much higher inertia than the motor does, that's considered a mismatch. A lot of common servos uh, with like PID, for example, want to be between uh, one to one that a lot of people aim to with no more than about six or eight to one, or they're not able to uh, prevent the motor from oscillating or uh, have it operate effectively. Our control system operates a little bit differently that allows us to have a much wider range. Uh, here's an example of torque first speed. These are same size motors, similar cost. In this range of the up to 1500 RPM, typical of lead screws and belt drives, this is their peak power, this is their continuous power. So you can see we best them all the way out to about 2000 RPM on continuous power. But in this range, which is real common for lead screws, uh, for a lot of operations in here, significantly more torque. So if you look at power available, this goes through and you can see, you know, continuous power, you are like a factor of four or five higher. Not until you get out to 1500 RPM, and this is their peak power, which they're good for about three seconds before they shut down. We can run this power all day long. Their continuous power, you can see again, we're still 50, 60% higher at 1500 RPM. And if you're looking at keeping things cool because hot motors tend to die, they age very quickly, you can see we have a much higher efficiency over this range. Till we get to about 3000 RPM was about where we crossed. And that's for their uh, continuous their peak, their efficiency is even lower. So the peak efficiency at 1,000 RPM, they're only running about 18%. We're running about 60. So you've got one third of the heating because of the high efficiency. And if you're not, if you're doing the same sort of torque, we're running at even a lower than our peak uh, power. So these end up running very cool in a lot of applications particularly if you're using these as fixturing to grab or hold things. Uh, we operate continuous torque in there while keeping quite cool. Uh, we're not overpowering the motor, so clamping operations and that type we do extremely well with. Give you a quick thing.
This would be a high energy mismatch. Okay, I want to answer a question that was here. The inertial mismatch applies both to stepper motors, but it also applies to all servos. Uh, when you have a mass at the motor, a springy coupling, whether it's a belt or whether it's a shaft torsioning, and then a large inertia, you end up having at low frequencies a fairly low gain. But as you increase frequencies, the torsion in the shaft starts to uncouple the large mass and you start seeing a higher and higher gain in the system which will go through and make you oscillate uh, you lose stability in the system if you have the gains high if you don't have the gains high you have poor control at low at the lower frequency range so in order to have good control you'd like to have a wide bandwidth with good gain and with a wide ratio of inertias uh, you end up uh, having a very wide uh, range of gains versus frequency that if you don't have ways to stabilize, uh, you just can't have the tightness at, of control with the high inertia out there. And for PID, they, I believe it's 8.6 is pretty much the maximum that they theoretically like to handle. They might be able to play games with it, but you just aren't able to stabilize the system in there. Very hard to tune. So they end up putting gear heads in to try and reduce the reflected inertia to the motor. And you'll spend as much on the gear head as you will on our whole system. So uh, highly programmable. You have multiple threads for flexibility and a very flexible command set. And fast operation. We'll do uh, mathematics and other things in here uh, 8,000 times per second. So it's got a very, what you call a fast scan rate if you're speaking in the generic. Here's an example of a machine that takes advantage of that. This is handling really delicate materials. This is about 50 AWG wire, or about 25 micron. Uh, it was used in a cardiac catheter, which is really sensitive to stretching. Uh, if you stretch it, you compromise the insulation. You also work hard in the metal, which means it won't be able to flex as many times. So this wire is limited to about 5 gram force on the wire while we were handling it. So we use a multi-wire dance arm. We use uh, one of the threads to go through and linearize an optical sensor that we were using to minimize the force on it. And then we put the dancer arm, we basically call it dancerless because we go through and estimate the spool diameter and make it run almost completely on feed forward from the drum that was feeding to us. We'd go through and do the take up reel. The arm would raise once to pick it up and then stay almost perfectly flat, even at different speeds, which reduce bouncing, which goes through and reduces stress on the wire. Example of being able to use fairly flexible programming to do some uh, fairly nice operations. Here's a picture of it. Uh, the same thing was also used uh, for winding thread, single silk fibers. Uh, Denaire is a gram per kilometer, and they can get down to about five denier uh, materials in here, which are very hard to handle without damaging. So just an example if there's something delicate that you have to handle. And we got a full article up on our webpage if you want to see it. Uh, torque control for direct drive. We have enough torque that we're able to direct drive a lot of things, which means you can get rid of the gearhead. When you put a gearhead in between the motor and the load, 
you tend to lose some of your sensitivity to see whether you're threading or not just because of the backlash in the gearhead and also the fact that friction when you're winding you know screwing in or unscrewing ends up in one case adding to your uh, perceived force in the other case subtracting from it if you're able to direct drive you've got a better sense in both directions so we call that a better feel of it so we can go through and detect whether they were threading properly uh, getting a nice low torque motion and we can turn it down if we see that we're cross threading we can back up and re uh, try we, for example uh, this is being used in assembling uh, one of the major brands of sprinkler heads so they go through thread it when they get it uh, the number of turns and detect that it's bottomed out then they kick the torque up sort of like changing your oil filter hand tight in a quarter turn they're able to do very similar with these motors in there they've been quite successful at that uh, labeling application you can handle the winding the unwind operation uh, rapid acceleration deceleration as you saw for doing the label itself we can also have analog inputs on these that will go through and handle the dancer arm operation do torque limits uh, got winding applications of for example most of the primary movies that came out of Hollywood on the uh, film the 60 millimeter format used our motors to go through and wind about 6,000 uh, feet of about a mile of film onto just a ring they don't have sides in them and so they have to have the friction for the force fairly well controlled so that these will hold together by friction or if they picked them up the whole center would drop out and you got a very large mess and when you're working with the original films that were actually shot on scene it's very precious film so uh, very good control give you a quick one the thermo solver we basically take a hybrid motor add a slot to it and we put a sense coil into it and what that does is senses the uh, magnetic flux going between the winding and the sense coil and it's varies as according to whether the teeth of the rotor are lining up with the stator or not where they're lining up it gives us a sine cosine out of it which is basically a resolver function uh, let me answer a question here with the nurse mismatch is there a drawback on energy efficiency and accuracy um, there's sometimes as to how much or your rate of power if you got too high of a mismatch you may have a hard time getting the power into the system so you may need some gearing but we can get away with a lot less gearing so often a tooth belt is sufficient instead of a gearhead which is very long life has a lot of damping to it as well and doesn't degrade in the same way as you get wear going on as gearheads which We'll start getting a lot of the backlash and get you into issues with it. Uh, but in general, if you've got enough power to go through and run it, it doesn't bother you on the efficiency and or the accuracy. But because you can go through and direct drive, you don't have all the degradation of accuracy due to backlash in a gearhead. So that's one of the nice things we're able to do by having uh, direct drive on these. So we actually use the motor structure as the magnetics for the resolver function. And you don't need a separate driver for the resolver. We use the same chopper drive, just do some very uh, careful dances as to how we go through and control the current. But that's software and that's uh, working quite well. Uh, we get about 32,000 counts per revolution. It's inherently aligned and gives us our commutation and our uh, feedback for positioning same size and weight as the motor alone and these can be put into smaller motors if you need them we're just looking at some stuff with some uh, 8 frame and 11 frame motors that these uh, can go into and we're actually working with someone to put them into give you a quick uh, picture of this guy in motion So you can see we save a lot of space by not having to have the encoder and protection for the encoder behind the motor. 
So here we're running about 130 degrees C. We actually evaporated all the water in the cup while this was running in here. And it's having no problem with temperature. And we're just doing different operations in there, but a little higher than we normally operate it just because of the temperature rating on the wire, but we could order it up here. Uh, here it's dropped into a block of dry ice. So this is running at about minus 70 C. And it's been there long enough to actually melt that far into the block of dry ice. Again, a little frost on it. It's magnetic pickup, so do not have the issues with it. Here's smooth operation, the low speed. It's owed to joy, but the motor's too quiet to hear it well. Quarter turn indexing. At low speeds here, you notice it's very quiet. And I'm going to go into that in another slide that we're... Here we go. Here's a sound meter on its most sensitive range. And to actually get the meter this low, we had to run it on a weekend with all the HVAC off and known in the uh, plant. So if you need things to operate quietly, this gets you there very nicely. Meter is calibrated to be at, I believe, three meters away, but we couldn't get any deflection from it at that range. Power going by the cubit distance. Uh, for spreading the power density. This is uh, very, very quiet. Okay. Uh, any other questions in there? Hi everyone, uh, do you have questions for Don? You may type inside the chat group right now, okay? Because um, I believe it's evening for Don, right? <laughs> Might be a bit late for you. <laughs> uh, actually, it's only about seven in the evening, so. Seven in the evening, ah, I see. So if you have any question, you may type in the chat group now. He may answer to you now. Okay, or you may want to unmute your mic and speak up. If not, we will be handing over to the next presenter. Okay. I okay. I guess there isn't any questions. Okay, so um I don't um if you if you are free, you may stay on, okay? <laughs> if not, you can uh, enjoy your evening first. <laughs> I'll probably stand and listen, and I'll go through, and if you've got any questions that come up in there, uh, I'll go through and... Go through again, then. Yeah, I'll, okay, I'll okay. go through and watch and, and answer anything through the text box, so... Okay, sure. So, thank you, Don, for your presentations. Thank you. So, next, I'd like to welcome... Uh, Bruda from Hansler, a company which is specialized in production of industry counting and control components. I'll hand over to uh, Prabhu now to explain more. So let's see. Hi, Prabhu. Hi, hi. Good Good morning, presenter. everyone. Um, I'm not yet the presenter. To share your screen, ask the organizer to make you a presenter. That's what is coming right now. I guess you have to make me a presenter. Uh, Don, are you able to help? One moment.
Uh, that's uh, P R A B U H U. Yeah, Prabhu. Right, right, Doc. Ah, yeah, it's the presentation. Okay, presenter. Okay. Just let me know when once you start seeing my screen. Yeah, we can see your screen. Okay, all right. Thanks uh, and uh, good morning to everyone. My name is uh, Ram Chandra Prabhu. You can call me Ram. I'm from the company Hengsler. And uh, we are a German company who is specialized in manufacturing feedback products. So I'll come to it just in a moment. So I would like to give you a brief introduction of what Hengsler is. Um, so just to give you facts and figures, we are about 600 employees. We are part of a global company called Fortif. Uh, we do about 200 million uh, of euro of business and uh, has more than 200 global representative across uh, the globe. And EDS is one of our representatives, specifically for Singapore and Malaysia. And uh, this is the 175th year for Hengsler. Started way back even before light bulb was invented. It's, it's quite like a dinosaur, the company. But uh, we do uh, take pride in saying that we are some of we are the innovators when it comes to some of the standard products. Like even if you talk about encoders or counters, uh, we were the first one to introduce certain components or innovate into them. Right. So this is just to give you a brief history. Uh, we were part of a company called Tanahar. Uh, in 1995, it's a US company. It's a conglomerate uh, where we have a lot of other group companies within it. And in 2016, we became a part of uh, Fortif. Danaher split itself into Danaher and Fortif. So Hengsler is part of a bigger, bigger organization called Fortif. Um, to give you a, a feel of where we are located across, uh, you know, it, uh, as I said, it's a global organization. Our headquarters being in Altingen, Germany. This is southwest of Germany. Uh, we have manufacturing plants in US, uh, Germany. We have a plant in Sao Paulo, Brazil. Uh, we have a plant in Slovakia, Kashmarok. Uh, we also have a plant in China, Tianjin, China. Um, and then we have sales office across, like uh, the sales office of India uh, is in Mumbai. But I sit in Bangalore, that's uh, the southern part of India where I belong. So we have seven manufacturing plants across the globe, and all of these are dedicated to the feedback products. So I'll just uh, come in to the products, what we do. We have basically four uh, core products within Hengsler. First of them, and uh, you know, uh, more than 45% uh, of Hengsler's business comes from uh, encoders. So what are encoders? I don't want to explain detailedly, but it's just a feedback device. And we are specialized in rotary encoders. So rotary encoders are feedback devices which converts mechanical rotations into electrical signals. This is what they do. So we do have range of uh, encoders, from incremental, which are smaller size encoders, to absolute encoders used in robotic applications and industrial automation to heavy duty encoders, which are used in steel plants, which are used in oil and gas applications, to ATX proof encoders, which can also be used in fireproof environments, to very specialized miniature encoders, like, uh, you know, Don's company, they can use for stepper motors. We have miniature encoders for that. We have encoders for elevators. So uh, very specialized in encoders from, from small to big range and uh, focused on rotary encoders. Second product is counters. Now, again, counters is a feedback device. You know, so you, if you have to count the operations, either mechanically or electrically or magnetically or completely electronic, we have the products uh, in, in counting and uh, widely used in, uh, you know, specific medical applications where you want to count the operations, number of hours used or in power industries. Uh, where you, you want to use these counters. Third product is thermal printers. 
So these, these are the these are the printers you find in uh, airports or kiosks uh, in your boarding pass or, or you go and fill your petrol pump you get a you get a receipt or you have a POS system when you pay by your card you get a receipt all these printer prints are thermal prints so they they don't need any reusable components they just use thermal prints thermal pad on a special thermal paper thermal technology so we are specialized in very robust thermal printers which are used in very specific applications which I was talking to about parking applications or several such applications. Fourth product we have is safety release. And this is very specific electromechanical force guided safety release. Um, very few manufacturers of these safety relays still exist here. We're very focused uh, when you talk about this relays. We are very strong in railway applications. We're very strong in elevator applications. So, wherever you have an operation which needs safety, like pushing a button to stop a machine so that a person who is interacting doesn't harm himself, or pushing a button on the elevator and the door opens of the elevator, it makes sure that the elevator car is there. All these operations are deemed as safety, and these. Uh, relays help create these applications still for, still for proof. All right. So, uh, you know, coming back to to give you, you know, a taste of Hengstler, I decided to just take you to Hengstler product that touches your life on a daily basis, right? So, how our products uh, interact or supports you on a daily basis is what I want to take you through. Starting your day with, uh, uh, you know, brushing your teeth, right? So, uh, then, uh, uh, this is not the normal process now. We do a lot of different things, but you start your day with brushing your teeth. So, brushes not just for your toothbrush, even the brushes uh, which use uh, for the mops, uh, uh, all, all are made uh, in specific machines, brush making machines. These uses are encoders. You need absolute encoders of different interfaces based on the kind of machines you have to give you positions of, uh, you know, the speed of the conveyor or an indexing application uh, where you have inside a rotary table. Um, so this, these are all uh, simple applications for absolute encoders to come up. And speciality for Hengsler, why customers choose Hengsler here is. No, uh, very high accuracy. So if you talk about the accuracy of these kind of rotary encoders, we have accuracy of 35 arc seconds. Uh, that's quite high actually, uh, when you compare to uh, standard applications and this is a standard accuracy in all our products. So this is not any special. So we do have special uh, accuracy encoders which can go up to seven arc seconds or five arc seconds or 15 arc seconds. But 35 is very standard and that's quite high for a standard uh, product with standard accuracy. This helps uh, achieve, uh, you know, the desired efficiency for your machines. So you're starting a day from your brushing your teeth and the next you go and have breakfast, right? So uh, now once, uh, you know, we have our own breakfast at home differently, but uh, if, if you see the uh, food packaging industry, right, bottling industry, a packaging of yogurts, uh, you know, filling machines for juice, juices, uh, fish fillet, fish cutting machines. So typically you call them food processing, packaging, labeling, filling machines. All these, uh, all these machines requires, uh, you know, different applications when you talk about packaging industries, spooling, indexing, conveying, these are very common applications, right? So conveyor moves on, you need to know the speed of the conveyors. So you use an incremental encoder there, um, where you have an indexing application where two operations are happening. You need precise positioning. You use an absolute encoder there. So we have the AC58 absolute encoder series. We do have special counters. If you notice there, it's a special magnetic counters, which are used to, uh, to, to know the number of operations happened in, in a machine, like a fish cutting machine, you need to know how many, how many operations have been conducted so that after those operations, you need to maybe sharpen those knives or you need to take care of these machines. So 
you need you need counters to count the number of operations there so we touch yourself from uh, brushing to having breakfast then you start uh, reading your newspapers at home we do come there as well so if you talk about printing industry we are very strong in printing industry for rotograph printing machines flexograph printing machines newspaper printing machines so all of these basically you know if you see a printing machines you you might see a number of rollers across right you might see you might see hundreds of rollers in them where the paper moves on it's very important for these rollers to be synchronized right so synchronization of these rollers determines that uh, you know the tension is kept common uh, tension is kept uh, stable on the paper so if you, if your tension is stable then the printing accuracy increases so basically if you use a high accuracy high robust encoders your printing accuracy increases your wastage reduces for those printers so this is how we directly contribute here by having you know a me too products by by fitting into all the applications by having robust encoders which can take up to high shock and vibration up to 400 g of shocks we have encoders which goes to 400 g of shocks from standard encoders which can take up to 100 g of shocks and uh, we have absolute encoders for uh, applications which requires high position control which i spoke to earlier plus at the same time you you might see a machine made in germany might use a profi profibus or profinet encoders because siemens is very strong there but at the same time a machine manufacturers which manufactures them in uh, singapore or which manufactures them in uh, us or india might use a different controller right you can go to uh, you know a, a abb for can open or a bosch for a can open machine or uh, you can go to uh, you know uh, ethercad interfaces for back of uh, uh, plcs we do support all these interfaces in our encoders all standard interfaces starting from you know ssi to ethercad ethernet profinet profibus can open our encoders you know can interact with all these uh, controllers we have actually the first three are not the way we start at day exactly right we start at day by looking at our phone we get up by looking at our phone you know that's that's how we start our day uh, and uh, e even though we try to avoid it we are pulled towards it because you know all our work all our studies everything is you know now interlinked all our communication all our friends are you can't live without your phone that's that's true right so how do we uh, you know how do hengsler touches you there you know from pcb printing machines you know uh, which requires high position accuracy uh, these pcb printing machines normally have space constraints you need to have smaller and uh, smarter machines we have the smallest absolute encoder available with high accuracy and uh, you know a resolution of 22 bits so this is the smallest encoder available right now ad35 which is 35 mm of dia and 22 mm of length which can give you high accuracy of 35 arc seconds and a resolution of 22 uh, bits and at the same time uh, you know this uh, the 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 antennas uh, which use which are used to track the satellites right you need to transmit the signals these antennas have two axes if you see in the picture so these are called azimuth and elevation axis these uh, these antennas require robust encoders with very high accuracy so we have uh, special encoders made for them which can work up to 15 arc second accuracy even in some cases we have encoders which uh, which go up to 5 arc second accuracy so uh, which gives them a very very good position control for two axis uh, you know to track the satellite you know satellite comes for less than 5 minutes so the antennas have to track the satellites in less than 5 minutes so you require uh, encoders which which have high ip protection which, because these are mounted outside so we have ip67 as a standard ip protection for our encoders on the shaft as well as uh, on the other end when the connectors are completely interlocked at the same time uh, we have ip69 encoders which can be used in uh, you know special applications where you know you you have uh, encoders have to be used around so 
then then you start your day by taking your car out uh into uh to your office or your to your customers or somewhere when you talk about car uh, you know you talk about machine tool industry you know, to to make uh, the bodies of the car or to bend the car uh, you you talk about uh, automobile industry uh, a, a processing line uh, or uh, you know a painting line or or uh, inspection lines uh, for cars with conveyors where you use encoders you talk about agvs which are used in uh, you know this industries which requires very special miniature encoders which are uh, you know industrially price competitive at the same time can support you with the uh, reliable data to be safe it also talks about the tire industry which you use in your car right so tire building machines all these industries are focus industries for hengsler uh, from machine tool to assembly handling machines to you know painting lines to agvs uh, automated guided vehicles so we have etex encoders for paint booths uh, you know we have miniature encoders which are like 41 mm size incremental encoders we have the smallest absolute encoder as i told you uh, for which is used for uh, agv applications coming to resolvers again so resolver is also uh, a type of encoder which is uh, basically a rotating uh, transformer you can say in another way so resolvers are used in very robust conditions where you have very high shock and vibration so uh, more and more electric vehicles coming to the picture nowadays and uh, there is a motor called a traction motor which is used uh, you know to which controls the drive of the whole machine that uh, when you talk about a conventional engine it is it is run conventional vehicle which is run by an engine this is run by the electric motor so it needs a precise uh, speed and position feedback for this and uh, we supply resolvers and this is a very uh, you know upcoming trend we see um, we do work uh, in different applications here for uh, resolvers as well so uh, not not just uh, when you talk about, uh, you take your car to a petrol pump okay you most likely to see our thermal printers used in uh, you know jilbarco uh, weeder route which is um, which is one of the largest manufacturers of petrol pump dispensing units fuel pump dispensing units across the globe it's very strong in india it's very strong in us and europe and uh, you know our thermal printers are used inside these uh, kiosks or if you go to an atm there you can find the c56 printers or x56 printers uh, which are used uh, uh, you know to give you thermal printouts right so what happens uh, if you don't if you don't take your car right you go you use a public transport right how do we come into picture when you talk about public transport yes we have products for public transport as well so if you talk about metros uh, you know uh, the door opening closing application uh, which uses pneumatic control for door opening closing applications we have pneumatic timers so you use two of these timers in tandem to to work them uh, continuously so once you press this button after certain period of time you have to close off so you don't have to use a separate electric timer for it we have pneumatic timers which we work with uh, you know um thales or uh, also for fbs so different companies here safety relays uh, is one of the main features when you talk uh, main products which goes to railways so it uh, it goes for signaling applications it goes for uh, applications where you have a dead man control to know if somebody is not operating the engine uh, you have uh, safety applications for door controls when you enter into the uh, you know the uh, the barge areas screening so all these applications wherever human safety comes into the picture right railways where more humans use them so uh, they prefer uh, hengsler relays so from the metro you go to our office you use your elevators right so uh, if you see the traction uh, motors or motors that lift the elevators up they use a special encoders or sign sign cos encoders so uh, we have, we are strong in these sign cos encoders we've been making them for more than 25 years uh, we supply to major motor manufacturers like siemens kds in china uh, you know biggest customer for elevator for us in india is schindler 
who uses more than 10,000 of our encoders, uh, incremental encoders uh, in India. We do supply to Kone for special applications, absolute encoders. So elevator, uh, not just uh, for encoders, elevator is also very important for us for safety relays. So we supply our safety relays for door opening and closing applications when you talk about elevator. The Otis is one of the example where we supply these safety relays. So you, you sit in your office, you know, you have power and power backups, right? Uh, so if you talk about power backups like generator, these, you know, our meters to count how long these generators have been used. We have products, uh, our meters for that. Uh, or if you, if you go to an industry, you see a circuit breaker, right, which is used uh, to control the power there. If you see the uh, circuit breaker manufacturers like ABB, Siemens, uh, Schneider, control, uh, Crompton and uh, Greaves in India, all these, uh, which is into the higher and medium range of circuit breakers, needs a counter inside them. You know, these are electromechanical counters. Uh, these electromechanical counters, uh, you know, are useful when uh, uh, you have, uh, you know, mechanical counters are used to count the number of operations. So, power and uh, then uh, you may come across in your daily life of some of your friend to go to hospital or you have to go for a health check checkup. Uh, Hengsler is very strong in medical, uh, you know, imaging and diagnostic equipments. Right? We supply our encoders to Siemens Health in years for, you know, CT, uh, uh, CT machine uh, or for an MRI scan. Uh, or for a C-arm X-ray machine. So all these, uh, if you see the C-arm X-ray machines, you know, the C-arm has to go up and down. So you need to, uh, you need to know how, how forward and how much reverse it has gone. These needs absolute encoders. And you have this table. This table uh, in some applications will have five axes for the tables. So you have a tilt, uh, you have a rotation of the table, you have up and down lift moment, you have longitudinal moment, so all this movement requires an encoder feedback to know exactly because these tables are used for, uh, you know, surgeries uh, for patients sitting on them while up, like for example, uh, surgery for heart surgeries. And, and uh, you know how, uh, how important uh, human life is, right? So uh, positioning of the table uh, and holding those table on, on position and giving those feedback uh, fast feedback, real time feedback is really important. And Hengsler is known for uh, uh, producing high accuracy encoders, high robust encoders. And we supply to GE, we supply to uh, Siemens Health in uh, We also, you know, if you go to a dentist, you can find the small uh, surgical tools, right? These require this miniature encoders for speed feedbacks. So there are a lot of uh, motor manufacturers uh, for DC motors like uh, Potoscap, Maxson, these all use these miniature encoders for speed feedback uh, process in these uh, applications. So we have encoders which are like 20 mm size, which goes to stepper motors, which goes to uh, applications like DC motors. And this. So um, you can find Hengstler's presence uh, also in hospitals. So you, uh, you come back from home, you go to a dinner table, um, you know, uh, the edge binding machines or the woodworking machines, which makes these tables or which helps to run this also uses encoders. You know, these are typically called cut to length applications. This you find everywhere, as I told you. So you have two process, right? Um, where uh, uh, you have a cutting process at the same time, you have uh, a, a process which moves in. So these are called uh, cut to length applications. And here you need an encoder feedback to know how, uh, like uh, you have to cut a, a label after every 100 meters or every 200 meters. So you need uh, you know, precise economical encoders here at the same time, um, which are smaller in size, which have hollow shaft dia. Also, if you need a high precision here, you have to use an absolute encoder or incremental. Okay, so coming to, uh, you know, a, a good night's sleep, uh, you say a bedtime story to your kids. Uh, you know, 
you still find Hengstler encoders here. So you have this book binding machines or uh, book processing machine manufacturers. We have them in India as well. So uh, which makes this hard covers. You you use uh, you know miniature uh, incremental encoders which are economical which goes there in those applications. And then once you read the story, you switch off the light. Even the cables uh, uh, which are harnessed, right? Wire harnessing machines. Um, these uh, have something called applicators in this wire harnessing machines. You need to uh, you need to know how long this applicator has been working, and this applicator keeps on changing from the wire gauges to wire gauges. You don't have any electrical connection possible on this. So these uses are special magnetic counters. You know, customers like Delphi, customers like Mother Sansumi, Yazaki, who are into wire harnessing for automobile applications for mobile industries. All uses these applicators. They require this special, uh, you know, counters, magnetic counters in this. So from morning, uh, you know, brushing your teeth or watching your mobile in the morning to uh, to 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 your bedtime, Hengstler touches your life uh, in some way or the other. Now this is a normal day in your life. So if you take a flight, uh, you will see our printers used in boarding pass. Uh, you will find our uh, resolvers used in uh, special applications, uh, in oil and gas uh, applications for drilling mills. You can find heavy duty encoders. So my intention was just to show you, you know, uh, how our products touch your life in daily basis in different applications and what are the speciality of these products and why are these used. So. Coming to the topic uh, for today, so how we can improve the yield or you know reduce defects in your company. So I was just noting down some points, you know, which are uh, which are you know what which customers face uh, in daily life, right? So uh, if you have a global structure of your company, right? You you have uh, you have factories in Singapore, you have in Malaysia, you have in India, you have in China. Uh, Hengstler has global presence everywhere. We have 200 partners. We have seven manufacturing locations. We have product specific uh, for specific markets. We have specific products, wide range of products. So uh, we can support you with, uh, you know, the supply chain. At the same time, we can support you with uh, specific products for your market. Uh, mo most most of the, uh, you know, automation applications, right? Customers who manufacture, like our customers are machine manufacturers. By, by now, you might have understood. So machine manufacturers or system integrators, right? Who uses our uh, encoders in projects or end customers, uh, right? Uh, end customers like elevators or end customers like steel plants who needs heavy duty encoders or oil and gas rigs. So these are the uh, broad category of our customers. And uh, you might see when you talk about the second and third category that they might need uh, you know, different uh, a one stop solution, uh, uh, somebody who can support them with a miniature encoder, somebody who can support them with a text encoder, with a 40 mm hollow shaft encoder. So, we are a one stop solution from 20 mm light duty to 200 mm heavy duty encoders. We have all this range along with us. If you have specific technical requirement you want to customize, we are the best company to customize and I have not seen uh, anybody else who can customize even for 100 numbers or 200 numbers. So we have the cap capability of customizing a product specifically for you even for 100 numbers. So that's that's really a great strength uh, when, you, when it comes to niche applications or special applications. We do have capability to uh, specialize uh, manufacturing for you. Special products, special mounting brackets, cable pulleys. Um, you know, special shaft, special connectors, special kind of cable lengths, everything is possible. You know, the, uh, see, uh, when, when you talk about productivity, you, you have to consider, you know, high quality of products which you use. We use, uh, uh, we follow Fortive business system. It's called FBS. And uh, one of uh, the key feature is one piece flow production. So each encoder which comes to you, is singularly produced and tested. So we don't have a batch testing. This enables to reduce defects. Um, it, it also helps uh, traceability. We have uh, serial numbers on each of our products. So you can trace it back on uh, uh, who was producing it, when it was produced, and all the production blocks can be looked into. 
so we have high traceability for the products uh, you know high quality inspection these all leads to uh, you know higher uh, you know uh, very low failures in uh, our uh, encoders which goes into the market uh, high speed and efficiency uh, required in machines so uh, uh, you know uh, uh, the the latest uh, trend is to produce more right you have to produce more at the same time uh, produce it with high efficiency and less uh, wastage in your machines so how can you achieve high efficiency is by using high accuracy encoders right which can give you real time information so hengsler has the highest accuracy available right now in standard production of 35 arc second in our encoders at the same time it can give you uh, you know real time speed by interfaces like ethercat um, uh, encoders which can give you real time data so this is really important Uh, for customers who are looking for high speed and efficiency and how do you say a product is robust and reliable right these are common words you see right accuracy efficiency robust reliable these are common words you see across so we are here for 175 years and we will be there for another 175 years or more so our products uh, have been uh, are been used for so long uh, we have been producing uh, counters in 1926 we have been producing encoders since 1986 so uh, we, we our products are there like recently i got an encoder which was 25 years old old and he needed a replacement for that so uh, we we do give reliability that our products uh, you know we we give uh, matching products for even 20 years back products we give them matching solution with current solutions um and uh, our products are uh, robust we have high shock and vibration uh, efficiency products are tested for this high shock and vibration and we have this uh, you know european uh, r&d uh, european quality for machines and products produced in germany uh, we have economical solutions for products manufactured in china and brazil we have a mixture of all this uh, at the same time our process makes it more reliable So just to show you a range of encoders i was talking about so we have encoders from 20 mm to 200 mm heavy duty and all the standard industrial in between right so these are the light duty encoders for lower end applications and these these encoders are the economical encoders which uh, which uh, which goes you know economical in the sense these are produced in high numbers so when when products are produced in high numbers we can always have a better price controlling right? we talk about absolute uh, we have again uh, the smallest absolute encoders of 20 mm length and 30 mm size with 22 bit uh, uh, you know resolution here so we have the small absolute encoders the motor feedback encoders in which are used in servo motors um, you know bosch rexroth siemens are one of huge customers for hengsler and who uses our uh, encoders in their servo motors specifically absolute encoders in the servo motors and we have the industrial duty absolute encoders which i was talking about plus we have this robust heavy duty encoders which has got marine approval used in different applications so 175 years of innovation and progress so you know our strength is total business system which i told you we have uh, short delivery times and uh, you know 95% is our otd so uh, this is basically more because of our footive business system we have all the raw products readily available with us and uh, we can produce and ship the encoders within 2 to 3 weeks of time we do have capability of producing customer specific products we do have customer specific logistics we stock and sell for somebody we we, we can uh, ship in batches and we always keep the customer first right so this is one of our strength of fortive and hengsler as such any questions you guys have should i go through the comments hi prabhu thank you for your presentations yeah okay um audience if you have any questions to any of our speaker you may type them inside the chat room or you may unmute your mic and speak up
All right, thank you then. Uh, you can always, uh, you know, ask your specific questions. Any question there? No? Uh, let me see ice. Oh, if you are making so many special parts, how is production done efficiently? Yeah. So uh, as also, we have more than uh, 50 lakh products uh, in uh, 5 million products in our uh, list. So when, when you talk about this encoders, you have uh, standard components, right? Like uh, disk of an encoder, shaft of an encoder, uh, the mounting flag. So we have uh, a U-shape uh, cell where uh, we have the standard fixtures available. Specialization comes uh, only in shaft size. Specialization comes in kind of connectors. Uh, so these are all uh, raw materials which are uh, uh, which are readily available, which we have in stock. And encoder is fixed and given, right? With this uh, mix and mixing and matching of this raw materials. So uh, it's it's basically our production system. This one piece flow production which helps us achieve it. That we don't uh, manufacture and keep all the products in stock. We have all the raw materials ready in stock, and this process helps us mix and match all this uh, to put a uh, put a shaft and uh, help them make it. So this is uh, how uh, we do it efficiently. So thank you, everyone. Thanks for your time, and. Yeah. Uh, you can always share your questions with TDS. Uh, they are technically, uh, you know, they can support you or you can always reach out to me. Um, I will share uh, my credentials in the email uh, in the chat as well. So uh, on later on stages, if you have more doubts or technical doubts, you can approach us. But your first uh, partner will always be TDS. They can always support you with uh, all the features. They have been a partner for more than 10, 15 years. Thank you so much. Thanks. Okay. Hi, audience. Is there any more questions? Okay. If not, we'll, we have come to an end of our webinar. Thank you, everyone, for your participants. I'd like to thank you all speakers for your presentation as well. I hope you enjoy the program and if anyone has any further questions or inquiry, do email directly to us and we will approach to you individually. Okay, thank you and see you on our next webinar. Thank you. Thank you. Wait, if, if I got a question, can I just ask now? Yeah, yeah, please. So that the email will be better, you right? Yes, uh, yes, Mr. Tan. You may, yes. Yeah, you please wait. ask now. Wait, uh, wait, don't, I still don't understand. Wait, so the motor got the dust. Then you must not take out the dust, right? I don't understand. Uh, let me check. Don is still around, huh? I'm here. Yeah, okay. Don, can you answer? What I've seen, I came out of 25 years of doing medical before founding Quicksilver. So we had lots and lots of mechanisms doing various things. Uh, such things as Teflon sliders. We'll slowly lay down a little bead of Teflon and every so often you'll hit a lump of it and we'll push it out of the way. If you're marginal on the torque, that will jam it. If you're not marginal on the torque, it will just clear it out of the way and you'll continue as an example. Lead screws tend to pick up a little bit of dust just because they're typically lubricated and that makes any dust stick to it. If you have some extra torque margin, you have enough torque to go through and push the dust out of the way and the system will keep going. Yes, you should be going through and doing PMs on it, 
but how often you have to do periodic maintenance on it has to do with how frail the system is. So if you're constantly having to do it, and the other one is with a little extra marginal torque, you may be able to go through and put felts on there, for example, to slide the dust out of the way, but that all takes power. So having, if you're looking at a system in there, closed loop, you can watch it as your torque builds up. You know that you've got to go and do periodic maintenance on it. Dust is built up, and you're able to clean it before the system is shut down. Uh, but having, it's like you don't always drive your car with your foot all the way down to the pedal, to the metal, all the way down. But there's times when it's nice to be able to punch it and get out of the way of trouble. Same thing with servo systems. Having some margin in there gets you out of trouble sometimes. That makes sense? Uh, okay, I think. <laughs> Wait, so, so then my second my second question is, uh, what is uh, rapid indexing? I don't understand that. What is rapid indexing? Uh, yes. If you're trying to go through and like on a pick and place machine, how quickly can you pick up the part, accelerate to where you're dropping it off and put it down again, which has to do with throughput? And so rapid indexing is, indexing is moving position to position as opposed to just continuous motion and being able to uh, do a quick motion and stop and a quick motion and stop is called rapid indexing. But you need to have a lot of torque in order to accelerate uh, inertia quickly to get it and then also to stop it so it doesn't overshoot. So lots of torque allows you to do like you saw the motor doing the stop at the all four spot uh, every 90 degrees. It was moving and stopping, moving and stopping every 90 degrees. That would be a rapid index. Okay. Wait, so is it good to have more or less? Uh, all matters what you're trying to do. There's sometimes when you want to move very slow and smooth, like I gave the pump application. And in that case, you're trying to have enough torque and enough margin so that if something starts to stick, it doesn't stop you altogether, and then you pick off again. If you've got mm -hmm. enough gain, you're able to just push through and keep moving slowly. There's other times where, like the ejecting line, uh, we had one where they're testing aluminum cans, and they look for pinhole leaks using a photomultiplier tube. And between each can, they'd have to shutter it, and then if they detected light coming through from pinhole leaks, they'd have to shutter it quickly or the PMT uh, would end up discharging all of the capacitors in the multiplier chain. And it would take several cans that they'd have to throw away until it would recover. So in that case, that allowed them to get rid of uh, a lot of wastage in their system. They're able to knock the wastage down by like a factor of five or six. So doing a rapid motion there is handy. And the one with the surface mount component line, again, they can, uh, move the line faster because they can move out very quickly and kick a bad part off out of the line. So they've got an optical inspection machine. And whenever they see a part that's bad, they can do a real quick flick and get it out of the line, dump it into the uh, rejected parts bin. And the faster they can do that, the faster they can move their line so they can get more production on the same machine. Without, uh, If they did it slowly, they might waste four or five parts instead of just the one that was bad. Wait, so if you do it, you, wait, you say if you do it slowly, they'll, they'll miss some parts, right? Is in, that correct? In the case, yeah, in those cases, if you're doing it slowly, as long as it's sitting there blocking the line, either you have to run the line slower, uh, which if, you, if it's a high-value part, you don't want to waste anything, or you might be kicking off three or four parts that were good with the one that was bad because you can't retract fast enough to not... Uh, throw out the part that's behind it. So if you can get a very quick flick, you can get rid of just the part that was bad and not waste parts behind it. Wait, if the if if you flick something very fast, won't it like damage it? Uh, you're only yeah. flicking off the ones that were rejects. Oh, so you throw away the rejected one. So the, there's like, uh, one of them goes through and makes inductors. So they've got a camera on the line looking to see if everything's soldered properly, if anything's cracked, uh, looking for other defects that they can pick up with a high-speed optical. And they're trying to move these down the line fairly quickly 
after they go through and inspect them, then they go through and drop them into the tape for the SMT machines. So being able to kick the bad parts off the line allows them to operate it fairly quickly. And that goes through and gets the, a lot more production through that machine instead of needing more machines. So either you have to be able to kick it off the line very quick, or you have to run the machine slower. So doing a quick flick, uh, basically uh, 20 milliseconds, if you're 50 hertz, your 16 milliseconds is one flash of the fluorescent lights. In that time, it's out and back, and the part's gone. So they can run the uh, nice high-speed camera line, kick parts off that they find that are bad, and keep the line running quickly. Um, wait, so like, like your, 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 your presentation is about like how motors can affect like the production, right? Is there, is there any other like parts in the production that can also affect it also? Well, you, you have your production where they're made in there. This happens to be on the inspection line portion that's qualifying the parts before they go through. So they're looking at them from a couple different angles. And when they come to the reject area, they've got in their system which ones to flip off of the good parts rail into the dumpster. And this allows them to do it at a fairly high rate so that they need fewer inspection lines to go through for the, the amount of production that they're doing. So it's how many parts per hour can you get through a machine it has to do with how quickly you can remove the bad parts from it. So the faster the motor goes, the better. So very fast, having a lot of torque. Uh, angular acceleration is uh, torque divided by uh, momentum, or torque divided by the inertial load. So you can either make it fairly light, which you want to do anyway, and then have a lot of torque, and we can get out and back uh, some of them as fast as five milliseconds out and back. So in 10 milliseconds, you've ejected a part and you're ready for the next one. So you're going to have parts coming down the line at 100 a second and be able to kick one off that's bad. Okay. So the, so, so, so does torque equal to speed? Or, so or tor what? torque equals acceleration. Oh. So, so you want acceleration or you want speed? Well, you need both, but the torque, uh, torque times, I should say, acceleration times inertia is torque. F equal ma. In this case, okay. angular, it's it's torque equal j uh, alpha. Angular what does that acceleration. Mean? What, what, what is angular acceleration? Uh, okay, position is theta, is angle. The first differential of that is velocity, which is angle uh, change in angle per second. And acceleration is change in angle per second per second. Wait, in this case, what does the angle refer to? Angle of the motor? Yes. So or you will physically shift the motor? Uh, repeat, please. What? Okay, so you will you will physically move the motor a certain degrees. Yeah, in this case, they made like a thin, uh, like printed circuit board that they connected onto the shaft of not nothing on electronic, but just a fiberglass, very low weight, uh, little arm out there. So they're able to go through, advance that forward, kick the part back, and get out of the way before the next one's there. Uh, okay. Okay. Wait. If if you are if if you have to move the motor, that that doesn't does that mean the motor has to be very light for it to move very fast? Well, you're to do it quickly. There's two things. When you say fast, if you're speaking in a short amount of time, you need to have a lot of torque in order to generate acceleration. Uh, every doubling in, or every halving in time requires four times as much acceleration. So four times uh -huh. as much torque. So if you're trying to you know, cut the time from 20 milliseconds, 10 milliseconds, four times more torque. Okay. Wait, from what I understand, the, the, the more torque 
a motor has, the, the, the more heavy it is. So does, does that mean your motor must be very heavy? Uh, not necessarily. We get a lot of torque by using a high pull count. Mm. So you end I, up um, with the... I, sorry, this is Max here. I believe you have a lot of uh, detailed technical you want to know about our Quicksilver. So can I actually arrange a meetup with you? Because we actually have this uh, Quicksilver motor actual product with us. So I can actually pass it to you. You can feel it that such a powerful motor, but the weight is not actually what you're expecting. Uh, I think that will be very great for you. And we can actually answer whatever question you have. Yes. So, uh, oh, uh, Mr. Tan, you think you are free next week? I think you'll be best so we can cover all questions for you. No worry. <laughs> Wait, how I how I meet up? Huh? I you can come over to my office as, as well. Uh, our office but is located to... in Sunai Garo. Why in oh, school, huh? your office? I, I'm a student. You're a student? Then you can come to my... Which school are you from? ITE. ITE, uh, Amokyo, ah? Uh, ah. Which course? Uh, mechanical Engineering. Mechanical Engineering. Can lah, I can meet you lah. I know your teachers, what? <laughs> oh, you so you met your teacher or what? Huh? Okay, how I, how I meet up? I got your... Oh, your handphone, no problem. I will contact you to how to meet up. Mm. You know uh, the robot room, the universal UR robot. The one is also from our company. So we know. actually, uh, I can meet you at the robotic room, lah. Yeah, uh, Max, I will pass his contact to you. So you I, I, talk to him. Uh, WhatsApp. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, thank you very yes. much. Okay, have thank a great you evening. Everyone yeah. for attending our webinar. Thank you, thank you. So sorry. You got it. Did anyone else have questions it. also? You want to say it, Okay. Huh? Have a great evening. Everyone, thanks for hanging in. Thank you, you student. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know.